guys, it's uh, Grayson again, and it's a new week, so I thought I would record a video talking about where I'm at now, and kind of the things that I'll probably end up talking about a lot on this channel. The first thing I'm probably going to talk a lot about is that I'm a huge RPG nerd. I play tabletop games like Star Wars from Fantasy Flight Games and D&D 5e. As you can see, we have a whole bookcase of different systems. I find that role-playing is a really interesting way to experiment with your own mental frameworks. So you have a certain set of ways that you think about things, but when you are forced to, much like an actor, be a different person for a period of time, and especially if it's a role-playing game or like a series where you're playing the same character over and over again, you get to a point where that character also has a certain set of frameworks. I find in my role-playing group it's an interesting place to kind of experiment with different ways of thinking that you wouldn't normally approach things from. It's also fun to um, help challenge your other players in the group, challenge their frameworks. Christy and I play with two cisgender heterosexual men and I love them. They're amazing guys. Um, we also play with James who's another trans guy. It's really fun if your character ends up being able to do something that would challenge their way of thinking about gender or sex or, or any framework that is different from yours. It's kind of interesting to poke them with it a little bit so I'll probably end up using that a lot as my catalyst for videos when I uh, approach new stuff and when I approach my old stuff as I'm hoping to do. The next thing that you should probably know about where I'm at now is that I consider myself a Spoonie. For those that don't know, I'll post a link below to the Spoon Theory, which is a way of thinking about disability and how disability affects your everyday life. So I deal with chronic migraines. I've developed them over the last five years. I've always had an issue with headaches and migraines, but it's gotten to a point now where they're pretty frequent. They have certain causes that I can try to avoid in order to avoid getting a migraine, but there are certain forces that I can avoid that will trigger one. I'm in the middle of one right now. So this is an interesting video to film because my senses are a little shaken by it. But yeah, chronic migraines, they suck and it'd be really nice to not have them, but I do. So I talk about them and how they affect my life. I also deal with IBS. Those of you who watched my videos before know that I went gluten-free when I moved to Portland. That was the beginning of a radical change in my life. Up until I went gluten-free in Portland, I experienced really disgusting, unfortunate, cumbersome digestive issues. When I went gluten-free, a lot of that went away and a lot of it stayed the same. I found out afterwards that it apparently runs in my family. I have several family members now that have taken gluten out of their diet and experienced um, amazing changes in their digestive habits, which is great. It still affects me every day. It's something that I can't really avoid. I know it's probably more than just the gluten and I should probably be, you know, experimenting with different things in my diet and taking different things out, but right now it's manageable and I like the food that I eat. I kind of have the rhythm of it at this point, so I don't want to fuck anything up to change that rhythm. So that'll probably talk about because that also sucks. And the last one is one that you've probably heard me talk about before, which is my chronic social anxiety. Yay! Chronic social anxiety. It means that I'm way more comfortable here behind my computer than I am out with other people. I spend a lot of time on the internet bringing resources to people that either don't know how to access those resources or are unable to access those resources themselves or don't know about those resources. And so I do a lot of what I consider activism through the internet and through technology. Trying to convert that into what I do is made much more difficult by the fact that I get nervous in front of basically groups of people more than four and places that I don't know and people that I've never met before. A variety of things related to people and me being around them. So it makes translating my activism, my style of activism, into something more than just the thing I do when I get home from work. It makes that difficult. So for now, I make YouTube videos and talk to people on the internet and try and help people live their lives in a more meaningful, happy way. But yeah, social anxiety. It's fun. And yeah, so moving on. The last thing I guess I wanted to talk about, my gender. Note that I left off the word identity. 
I've recently moved away from using the word identity after the word gender. I described it on my Facebook as gender and gender identity are the same. Gender identity is just a nice way of saying we've thought about it already. And so I find that gender identity is a nice way of saying people who are trans or people who are consciously gendered, which is an interesting concept to think about, and I'm sure I'll make a video on it at some point. Last time, I don't even really remember where I left you people. I identified as genderqueer for a time. I identified as F to M for a time. Uh, I identified as a trans man and androgynous and a whole lot of things. And none of them really ever quite fit for me. A lot of them were really close and a lot of them introduced me to a lot of people that I love and support very much. But none of the terms really felt like, you know, aha, this is it. Over the course of the last five years, I've met a lot more people and I've encountered a variety of genders and a variety of terms and I've kind of settled into a kind of stable gender. I mean, I haven't changed my presentation at all. You who may have watched my older videos may recognize the shirt. It's still my favorite. The terms that I've kind of settled on going from most general to most specific are trans or transgender. And that's kind of self-explanatory. Trans as being someone who is something other than what people assumed them to be at birth meaning that I am not female or a woman. I do not use an asterisk. I think it's unnecessary. The next term that I use is non-binary. I use it as all one word. I don't put a hyphen in it. I recognize that grammatically that's probably the way it should be, but I think it looks better without a hyphen and it's easier to type. So I use it without a hyphen. Um, non-binary meaning somebody who is not binary identified, meaning that I am neither a man nor a woman. Getting more specific. The final term that I use is one that I have only recently come to adopt publicly. It's something that I've held privately for a while now. Being non-binary is already difficult. When you throw more terms on top of it, people tend to get more skeptical of your gender. They tend to scrutinize your presentation and your transition path and your transition choices a lot more when you finally pick a label. Um, but the final term that I use is agender. I've met some very lovely agender people through YouTube my first time around. That would be Ashton in particular. Over the course of my friendship with those people, I've come to understand myself as agender that may be different from the way that they understand agender, but is one that I find personally meaningful. So for me, agender means that I do not have a gender. This is something that a lot of people have a hard time with, especially as I've physically transitioned away from a feminine to a masculine, because those are kind of the options that I'm given by society. I haven't really changed, like I said, I haven't changed my presentation at all since I transitioned. I still wear most of the same things that I wore in high school, so I don't really understand why people can't understand that I can look the way that I look and personally not hold any gender in my being. I don't know what you want to call it. My internal gender, or lack thereof. Agender for me has a lot to do with the fact that the way my brain works inherently, I don't see anything as gendered. I recognize the patterns by which other people gender things, only to the extent that people want that to be understood. So if I have a, 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 tr a trans friend who is transitioning to a certain gender, for example, let's say she's transitioning to a woman, uh, physically, socially, legally, whatever, and she presents herself in a dress, in high heels, and let's go full stereotype, she's wearing pearls. I recognize that as a feminine expression because that's how she wants me to recognize it. Not because I actually believe that those things are feminine, because I don't believe in feminine or masculine. I believe that people have ways of understanding things. 
and it looks different for everybody, which is why gender is so confusing for everybody all the time, especially when you throw trans people at it and we say crazy shit like this. A gender for me is kind of a recognizing of that fact that I don't see things as gendered, including myself, instead of taking that concept and, and trying to make everyone else change their framework in a way to fit my understanding of gender. I instead internalize it and claim it as my gender because that's how I see the world. And people don't seem to think that gender is a lens through which we see the world, but it definitely is. So those are the, the three terms that I use to describe myself at this point. It's been a weird, weird road getting to non-binary and agender. Non-binary was pretty easy, it came on pretty early. Those of you who watched my videos before recognize that I've used the term before, like from the beginning. And so that wasn't really hard to take on. It, I just had to overcome a lot of shame in identifying as non-binary because a lot of people like to erect gatekeepers and gates around transition resources. And in order to get past some of those gates and people, you have to pretend that you fit into the options that society gives you. And so you have to pretend to be one or the other. And so it took me a long time to grapple with the fact that I didn't have to be a man or a woman. I can still exist in the world as something else. I can function in the world as something else. And there's a word for that. And for me, those words are trans, non-binary, and agender. And so those are the things that are going to be influencing the way that I react to my old videos. So that's probably what I'm going to talk about a lot. I hope that this all made sense. I like to think that I can explain things pretty well, but you know, if you have questions, let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. You can also find me on Facebook. My Facebook is slash grayson.simon.01. You can also just look me up in the search bar, especially if you're trans and have trans friends. We probably have at least one or two people in common. Yeah, so this is my second intro video. Hopefully next week I will get started on my old videos. I think the first one is probably about androgyny, so I'll probably be coming back at that with the agender stuff. Yeah. I guess I'll see you then.